Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur. My name is Sean Walcha, founder of Cali BBQ and Cali BBQ Media in life, in the restaurant business, and in the new creator economy. We learn through lessons and stories. We're so grateful for Toast, our primary technology partner at our barbecue restaurants, and so many of the guests that we have on the show that believe in this show, that give us the opportunity to have conversations like we're going to have today. Uh, today is a conversation that has been a long time in the making. Uh, we're grateful to welcome Josh Halpern, the CEO of At Big Chicken Shack. Josh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, this is uh, definitely overdue and it's entirely my fault that we haven't done it earlier, but we are going to make up for lost time, aren't we? No worries. You uh, you guys have been busy. We're going to let the audience know um, your backstory, the brand that you guys are building. But before we get into that, I'm going to ask you our favorite random question, which is where in the world is your favorite stadium, stage or venue? So that's a really hard question for me to answer. And it's hard because when I was at Anheuser-Busch, I ran all of the stadiums and um, got uh -huh. to go to a lot of stadiums worldwide, too. Um, so I, I, you hate to, you hate to not answer the question objectively, but it's, you know, for, for what are you doing, right? Um, being in Wrigley Field or Fenway Park are probably my favorite from a nostalgic standpoint. The new Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas is my favorite from a cool kind of awesome environment standpoint. And then obviously mm -hmm. I, I love the six stadiums that we're currently in, right? And about 10 or a seventh one next week. And Bush Stadium is where I met Shaquille. And, um, you know, I have a lot of great memories running the on-premise for, for Anheuser-Busch. Being in St. Louis, having that job is, is just one of the greatest life experiences you could have. So I hate to not answer your question, you know, or, or to dance around your question, but I've easily been in over 100 stadiums. It's hard to pin it down on just one. Well, we're going to go to Bush Stadium. That sounds like a perfect place for this uh, this two-minute drill that I'm going to put you through, which is... I would love for you, so what we want to do on this show is inspire hospitality leaders all over the globe, people that are in the restaurant business, people that are learning how to be storytellers, learning how to think beyond the four walls of their restaurant. Um, we're going to go to Bush Stadium. We're going to get Entrepreneur Toast, uh, Big Shack. We're going to sponsor the entire event. We're going to get the best people on the globe to come and listen to you. Tell us your Shaquille O'Neal story. My Shaquille O'Neal story. Your Shaquille O'Neal story, because you don't sit in the position that you sit unless you have done something in the past. When was the first contact with Shaquille O'Neal? So and it's actually it, funny. And, and how did Bush it get Stadium, you to the seat that you're in? <laughs> Bush Stadium is so relevant to that story. It's actually perfect that I would tell the story at Bush Stadium. Um, in 2015, I was actively trying to figure out a way to put a Budweiser experience on the Las Vegas Strip, right? And uh, all I wanted was for us to bring some of the Clydesdales from Warm Springs Ranch and have the ability for folks to come out, have a beer, take a photo with the Clydesdale horse, et cetera. Come to find out it's illegal to have a horse on the Las Vegas Strip, but it's legal to have tigers, which is about the most Vegas thing you could ever expect in life, right? And uh, one day, I can't do it. I can't pull it off. Vegas is offering me spots around Fremont Street. I don't want to be on Fremont Street. And then I get this call from my developer and he said, hey, um, you know, because beer companies can't own restaurants, they could sort of sponsor an entertainment zones, if you will. And I, I get a call from uh, the, the guy helping me out in Vegas. And he says, you're about to get the weirdest phone call of your life. And the guy who called, I, I grew very close with, his name's Perry Rogers and it's Shaquille O'Neal's agent. And Perry uh, is the R in JRS Hospitality, which has about a hundred million in revenue on the Las Vegas Strip now. They didn't back then. And Perry called me and was like, I know this sounds crazy, but I'm Shaquille O'Neal's agent. I need to be with Shaquille in St. Louis next Friday. Why don't I come down to the brewery and I could share with you my plans. I want to hear your plans. And, you know, then we could have dinner with Shaquille. And um, it was like literally July of 2015. Seven months later, Beer Park by Budweiser was opened at the Paris Hotel, and um, and we got to know each other, and we got to really have a deep conversation over months, and he got to see what I was like with the team, what I was like, uh, you know, managing P&L, et cetera, and Shaquille, the Perry, that is, and Perry and Shaquille really grew to, to like and respect me and vice versa. That night, though, um, you know, Bush Stadium, Anheuser-Busch, 
I ended up taking Shaquille and Perry to the Cardinals game that night. And we sat in, in the suite that, that was my team managed. And um, the Cardinals found out that we were coming and somehow sh- they had me park in the player's lot uh, because I was bringing Shaquille. So, you know, there's my Ford Expedition with like, you know, Ferrari, Porsche, Corvette, beat up Ford Expedition, but that's a different story. And uh, we ended up in the locker room and and I'll, I'll never forget it for as long as I live. All of the St. Louis Cardinals are freaking out because Shaquille's such a big deal. And it was like, oh my God, oh my God, it's Shaq. Like John Jay, the center fielder was literally like dancing, like, oh my God, oh my God. Except for Matt Holiday, who was the slugger at the time. And he's sitting in the corner with his arms like this. And I said to Perry, I go, I guess 20 million is the number. And he says, what do you mean? <laughs> I said, 20, 20 million is the number where Shaq's not that cool, right? Like, uh, and he looks over and he goes, yeah, I guess you're right. And like this kind of like plain way. And uh, Mike Matheny comes into the clubhouse and is like, guys, say bye to Shaq. We got to go. We got to go. And they all go running out of the locker room. And Matt Holiday saunters over to Shaquille. And he goes, oh, Mr. O'Neal, I just want to tell you what a pleasure it is to meet you. And Perry leads in and he goes, 20 million is the number where you can't show it in front of your friends. I've never <laughs> thought right? and I, it was like the greatest line of all time. Right. And, but we had this great day together and we all sort of stayed in touch. And um, when Shaquille wanted to expand big chicken and Perry and, and Matt Silverman and Matt Pye, um, they wanted to go hire a CEO and, and they needed to bring in someone that they, they know already and they know what to expect. Uh, and, and Perry and I spoke about it and the rest is history, but it all started at Bush Stadium. So I'm happy that of all the ones I threw out, because I didn't know where you were going on that first question. Happy of all the ones you threw out, you picked Bush Stadium. And now Big Chicken is going to be opening two units at Bush Stadium this season. Couldn't be more thrilled. And that story about Shaquille and I going into the stadium, you know, it's I, I told the story to a member of the team and they actually went back because they had photos from it and they saw me there and they were like, no way. It, it's just such a major part of, of the authenticity of who we are, I think. So, yeah. Well, it's beautiful. And I'm so grateful that you shared that story with us because this podcast and this show that we do, it's teaching how story matters. And we never know where we are in life, which is why we encourage restaurant owners and hospitality professionals to document, you know, a barbecue business becoming a media business is laughable until I'm here sitting, having a conversation with you and you are working with Shaquille O'Neal, building the greatest chicken brand, hopefully, that has ever been been created. So for you get me to the point, when did you get that next call from Perry of, hey, we're thinking about you? How did that conversation go? Was yeah, that- I mean, Perry, Perry and I, we had kept in touch over the years. We we talked at least once a quarter for six, seven years. And, wow. um, you know, I uh, my, my contract ended at my previous company and I kind of put out this LinkedIn message that was like, I'm at the 20 year mark in my career. It's halftime. And I'm literally going to go into the locker room for halftime and come out, you know, for the second half. And he called me and he's like, how long's your halftime going to be? So, so it's on LinkedIn. Right? <laughs> it's, uh, oh, you know, oh, I don't think the conversation LinkedIn. quite went that way. If Perry's watching this. He'd be like, that's not exactly the way, you know, the, um, Everyone has their I mean, own versions of the story. That's why. It's uh, but, but I mean, look, at the end of the day, if there's one thing I've learned in my career, it's you, it's really more about work the people you work with along the way than the brands itself right and if you can work with really incredible people and work with incredible brands that that's the best of all worlds but you could take a rock star team and do just about anything and you know perry and my experience together and and matt silverman was a part of that build as well and he he was the co-founder with shaquille on on big chicken right the two mats and shaquille they knew exactly what they were getting with me. They knew exactly the moments they'd hug me, the moments they'd want to choke me. They knew the exact mindset I was going to bring into the team, the exact way we were going to move. And I, I think knowing that up front, and I knew their, them too, right? I knew exactly when I would be happy and it's so critical. Um, you know, people, good people follow each other throughout careers, right? And uh I'm really blessed that that they wanted me to continue to follow them and, and hopefully the feeling's mutual. And now a quick break from restaurant influencers to share an exciting new offer from our sponsor, Atmosphere TV. Go to atmosphere.tv forward slash BBQ to not only get Atmosphere TV for free, 
but also our audience is given the gift of $200 in ad credits, as well as free activation. Join more than 40,000 other venues who use Atmosphere TV by signing up with the code BBQ at atmosphere.tv forward slash BBQ. Keep guests entertained with Atmosphere TV because you have the ability to turn your promotions and your advertisements onto your television with this platform. The simple plug and play device lets you take control of the content on your screens. Keep guests entertained, engaged, and informed of real-time specials, career opportunities, and announcements that you can personalize within your own custom content dashboard. Tap into great channels such as America's Funniest Home Videos, Fashion, Throttle, Chive TV, Sports Highlights, Red Bull, Real Madrid, along with unbiased news and entertainment. There is something for everyone. Over 60 curated channels of short form, entertaining content to choose from right at your fingertips. They also have an incredible ad supported network that allows you to not only market within your four walls, but also locally or nationally if you desire. The platform gives you full control to dial in your marketing efforts. Please go and visit atmosphere.tv slash BBQ and let them know restaurant influencers sent you. So you wrote that I'm a builder, both of brands and people. I see opportunities where others see barriers. How do you build brand? Yeah, I think the the interesting thing about brand is what really is a brand, right? And when you think about what is a brand, a brand really is the people that build the, the brand, right? Um, it's the people and it's it's the actual what. And it's the principles and it's the values. And it's, you know, I, I've built extremely diverse teams in my career, but the team all sort of has a similar ethos, right? It's, we want to enjoy work and life. We want to build something together. We want to win together. We want to celebrate each other, right? And I mean, th these are things where, you know, gender, race, all, all of those traditional kind of things that people talk about when building a team, they're, they're agnostic, right? It's it's a type of person that that wants to leave their jersey in a better place when, when they come off the field, right? And um, that that's really what I've sought to do. Um, you know, I'm really proud of the fact that not only have we driven top line and bottom line results, every team I've ever worked for has driven strong top line and bottom line results, that I'm normally at the top of engagement scores too, as I've done it in bigger companies, because you build a culture where people are really excited to come to work every day. They know that their boss is just crazy enough, right, to, to keep things fun and interesting, but at the same time, you know, holds them accountable to results and it will be their biggest cheerleader when things are going right. And we'll take them in private and, and talk to them when things aren't, you know, and, and really try to work with them on on how to fix it. Um, one of my favorite comments is when people say to me, man, working for you wasn't easy, but you were one of the best bosses I ever had, right? And that means I grew people and, and that I'm still relevant in their mind, you know? And um, if you could work for someone for a period of time and you leave the experience saying, I'm better off for having been on that person's team, that's really the biggest legacy any of us leave, you know, when when you're a leader or in, and when you have to when you have to lead a team. It's not about, hey, I grew top line from this to that. It's, hey, here's X number of people that are going to go do incredible things because they got to partner with you for a little bit. Do you encourage failure? I mean, one of my favorite stories, and I actually did it at my last company. I was with the CMO at the time of uh, Johnny Rockets, you know, going back five or six years ago. And he said he literally had two get out of jail free cards that uh, that he would give his team on like four by six index cards, right? The first side was like the Monopoly, get out of jail free, but with the Johnny Rockets logo. And on the back, it was, this is what I tried. This is why it failed. And this is what I learned from it. And the employee would sign it and he would sign it. And the only rule behind it was you had to use both cards each year, right? Wow. I, I think that failure is critical, but fail fast and fail small. Right. I, I'm not going to take multi million dollar gambles. Yeah. If it's a, hey, let's go try this. We'll we'll do it in one store or we'll do it for one month. And it's five thousand dollars is the potential, you know, downside, but the upside is this incredible thing. Let's let's rock and roll. So for I 
as I was getting ready for this, I, I had I had no idea how incredible of a Facebook series Big Chicken Shack was. I well, mean, you really did your homework. Yeah, this is absolutely this is thesis stuff for why we started this show. It's you know when I talk to restaurant people that want to get into the business, I tell them start sharing your story first before you start to invest hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars and sign big leases, you know, talk about the story. Obviously it's a lot different when you have a personality like Shaq, but tell, tell me about the, the Facebook watch series and, and how it helped uh, big, big chicken. Yeah. It, it was crazy. Right. Um, that they did it <laughs> quite honestly. Right. I yeah. mean, I know the two mats, right. I, I don't even know what that conversation would have looked like to convince these two guys who, you know, they're, they're chefs, right? Um, hey, you're going to be a TV star in this thing. And, you know, you're going to be with Shaquille for six months or something. Um, for Shaquille, chicken is one of the most personal things in his life, quite honestly, right? We all have those like random things that we take very, very personally. And, and for Shaquille, chicken's one of them. He grew up in a military family and, you know, military family sort of lives just on top of the safety net, right? And, um, you know, the commissaries would like discount whole chickens at, at the start of the month. And his mom, Lucille, would go out and buy whole chickens. And one night would be the thighs, the next night, the breasts, the next night, the drumsticks. And she would make some fried chicken or grilled chicken or barbecue chicken and whip up a couple sides. And they'd sit around the table and do homework and tell stories. And for Shaquille, chicken is that personal that, I mean, the guy had franchised 150 units and um, was like, I don't want to be a franchisee in chicken. He had done multiple endorsement deals. He said, I, I can't endorse someone else's chicken. It doesn't feel authentic. Hey, Perry, we, we need to do this ourselves. You know, and, and Matt being a, a, a really incredible chef, you know, one of the youngest ever chefs, uh, executive chefs that Wolfgang Puck ever hired, et cetera. Um, they agreed, let's do this ourselves. And somewhere along the line, I, you know, I, I don't exactly know how it went down, but the notion was let let's do the building of this thing through this Facebook live show and got Shaquille super excited about the prospect of it. We actually did like the market research behind which logo we were going to do live on the show, which is kind of, and I look at the other logo and I'm like, thank God we didn't do the other logo. That's not <laughs> um, But it was really incredible. And we were able to get suppliers super excited about working with us and, and people were able to see like, this isn't, this isn't just some like, you know, some restaurant guy overpaid Shaquille and we threw up uh, Shaquille photos everywhere. It, he was really ingrained in this, you know, at doing the research, you know, at the suppliers. He's our largest shareholder. The, the restaurants, I mean, this is an actual restaurant on my, on my background here. It's not a shrine to Shaquille by any stretch, right? When you walk in, you feel his presence, right? But it's it's not meant to be a shrine of Shaquille. It's really meant to be um, to be embedded in his life, which is just so spectacular. I think it's it takes significant courage when Shaquille is going to rely on his brand, but build in public. You know, to have those business discussions that are always. I mean, we see these big brands and we envy how, how many units they have and their average unit volume, but then they don't have the courage to go, you know, well, Shaq, Shaq is, a, I mean, he's an incredible personality. He, he's okay with making fun of himself. Do you think because of who he is, that's why the show worked? Or do you think that other brands on a much smaller scale, obviously you're not going to have the millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of views, but on a smaller scale, can start to build in public and share, you know, what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah, I, I think the number one thing, the reason why Big Chicken Shack worked was we weren't under pressure to get unit one open until we were under pressure to get unit one open. And unit one, which is actually the one I, that my background is from, it's solely there because we were under a time crunch to get it open for the show, right? Um, but, but most wow. people, yeah, that's but amazing. <laughs> it's like totally reversed. We, we were supposed to be somewhere else and it kind of fell through late in the game, but that's a different story. But the, uh, but I mean, this unit now is, is a fantastic unit. It's doing so great. Um, people come on their way in and out of the airport in Vegas. You know, we're just outside the Virgin hotels, uh, lobby. Most people remember it as the hard rock from back in the day. You know, I think the critical thing that's that matters here, like you were successful with restaurants before you you started your your media group. If you had tried to start the media group first, now that becomes the primary focus. The distraction becomes the restaurant. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like if we had done this any other way or if we were under a greater time crunch, 
it, it would have been more of a distraction. I think you really need to, to think it from a marketing perspective. And, you know, I ran the entire restaurant marketing brand Heiser Bush. It's, are you doing things deliberately? And are you thinking about them two or three steps down the road as to what is it going to bring to you? And every decision we've made, it was never, how do we do some, get it the quick win? It was, how do we really focus on two, three, four steps down the field? How does this decision today make us better in three years? Do you have any Anheuser-Busch stories of lessons learned, some of the biggest lessons you learned? Yeah, the, the biggest one, quite honestly, and it's it's one that I got made fun of for like a really long time until people stopped. You have to be willing to ask the dumb questions, quite honestly, right? So my first 12 years of my career, I had zero restaurant experience. I was selling to Walmart, 7-Eleven, you know, uh, Kroger, you know, these big consumer brands. I, I was responsible for peeps at one point in my life, the candy, you know, the, the yeah. chicks and buddies. And I'd like tied laundry detergent and glad trash bags and all this stuff, right? And I'm at AB and I'm running global shopper marketing for Anheuser-Busch. And one day I'm asked, hey, would you move your family to St. Louis, Missouri and take over the, the bar, restaurant and nightclub vertical? And I'm like, I don't know anything about this, right? And um my team, we had been losing market share to craft beer and Corona and other things for like many, many years. And, you know, I get down to St. Louis and like, there's literally a betting pool. When will I be fired? Because it's obvious I'm not a restaurant guy and I'm walking around with my, my moleskin notebook. I still have my moleskin notebooks, right? You, go, and yeah. I'm like, uh, you know, what are the three things that keep you up at night? Right. And my guys are like, this guy is a joke asking this question. Right. And I'm writing my little notebook. Right. And in four months, we get 250 people to respond. So I have 750 answers, right? There were only five things. There were only five things, right? Traffic, check size, innovation, server training, and commodity cost. That was it, right? And we said, look, we're a supplier. We don't want to make things cheap. So let's throw that one out. But let's talk the other four. Hey, team, what do you know about growing traffic? Well, what do you mean? We have $2 pint specials at every bar on this block. Okay, that's why they're coming to the block. Why is someone going to Sean's bar versus Josh's bar? No idea. All right, so we can't help we can't help these bars grow, right? Check size. How do we grow average check size? I ah, get them to drink more beer. Yeah, that doesn't work, right? That whole social responsibility thing. What do we know about food? What do we know about mini day farting? Right, like like little things. Like why wouldn't a, why wouldn't the hostess? take the first beer order when she seats you, just get that first round moving, right? Um, when we got to server though, it was the biggest learning of all time. And I still carry this one with me in this role. 97% of servers under the age of 40 don't believe they actually work for the bar or restaurant they work for. They say that they're mercenaries for hire, that they're there to grow their own personal brand. 80% believe that if they went from Josh's bar to Sean's bar, all the regulars would follow them, right? Uh, one out of every five and a half dollars sold in a restaurant is actually at the server's recommendation, right? So you got to start thinking about your labor force a little differently. They're not an operational cost. They're actually a sales opportunity cost, right? If done right, right? So the minute we started to put that in place, we were able to re-engage with all of our customers. And then the next thing you know, we were growing top line, bottom line and market share within six to nine months. Uh, of kind of that epiphany. So it took about a year and um, two months before we started growing chair. But I had that job for four plus years. The minute we started growing, we never stopped. I, it was all so based fun. on that stupid question. What are the three things that keep you up at night? I'm so happy that you shared that. It's one of the things that my grandfather taught me, which is stay curious, get involved, ask for help. Asking for help was the hardest lesson for me to learn. Asking the stupid question not knowing, not thinking that I had to have all the answers. Where did you learn how to ask for help and how to ask a stupid question? I'm, I'm just a dumb guy, I guess. No, I mean, <laughs> you, learn, you learn early in sales training that if you need to be asking questions in any sales pitch, right? Uh, you just need to get your customer talking, right? Um, and that's what I wanted to do. Most of the customers are skeptical of me in the beginning and I just need to get them talking. And if that meant we took a step back before we took a step forward, great because we would take one step back and then propel. Uh, by the way, the other thing I learned at Anheuser-Busch that's worth everyone knowing is every single one of us pours beer the wrong way, drinks beer the wrong way. 
And um, you need to start doing it the right way or you're, you're just hurting yourself and it's not fun, right? The reason why people say, I don't drink beer, it makes me bloated is literally because they're pouring beer the wrong way, right? So the best thing you could do is actually pour beer like straight down the glass. You have it bounce like just before it hits the bottom of the glass. And you want like this much head on the beer because that head is carbon dioxide. The people that hold the glass at the side trying to trick out with no, with no head on the beer they're really hurting themselves. The carbon dioxide gets caught in the beer. And if you take like a, a piece of food or like a paper towel to simulate food and you touch that perfectly poured beer, the head goes all the way down to the bottom and then it overflows on the top of the glass. You actually used to do this, but we used to demo it all the time. It would drive people crazy. And that's what's happening in your stomach when you quote unquote, pour the perfect beer by giving yourself no head. So it has nothing to do with our conversation, but no. it's probably the only thing people will remember <laughs> They're going to learn how, hey, if they learn how to pour proper beer, you prob you're probably going to have a, a, a reduced pour cost too. So take that, take that for what it's worth. 100%. That's the other thing that bartender is screwing the bar out of roughly one and a half to two ounces of beer on every pour that adds up quickly. Exactly. So tell me how, how does, how does decisions get made to make bold moves like putting, uh, putting big chicken on a carnival cruise? So that one was the big man, right? Um, you know, <laughs> I mean, uh, part, part of this, though, is, you know, you need to understand what you are and what you're not. And yes. one of the things that they said before I got here as to what we're going to be is we're going to be about big fun and whatever that looks like, we're going to be about big fun. Shaquille has been an endorser of Carnival Cruise now for like a decade, something like that, right? He's actually technically the chief fun officer of Carnival Cruise. Yes. And, um, you know, when... Uh, when they were talking, you know, in their annual meetings or whatever, Shaquille's like, would you put a big chicken on every boat? And they were like, can we start with a few and see how it goes? Right. <laughs> so, I mean, that one was really Shaquille, um, you know, working with Shaquille is unbelievable. It's, it's a ton of fun. It's, it's challenging, it's rewarding, but, you know, um, I have, I, I like to joke around and say, I, you know, I have a bunch of problems that no one else has and a bunch of things done for me that no one else gets. Uh, and it all works itself out. And one of those problems is I don't really have permission in how we grow, right? Because, you know, different arenas call up and say, we we want you here. And now all of a sudden we're going to enter a market through an arena or, I mean, the first ever award we won as a company was Best Fries at Sea. Like that's not supposed to happen, right? But it did because Shaquille asked the question. So it's, um you know, it, it's, unbelievable but if you just follow kind of your your true north compass and for us it's really you know we're we're the things we're about we're 100 percent about we don't overcomplicate things we're all about big fun we're all about what i call the four wins right we're a partnership company we're all about our franchisees unit level economics and the guest experience and if we can achieve those four things we're we're going to be in really, really good position. And but big fun is core to who we are. It's why we have the chocolate chip cookie, the circumference of an NBA basketball. It's why we show up on Carnival cruise ships. It's why we signed a, a, a partnership with Blue Origin to discuss what right. it would take to bring a restaurant in outer space. It's all big fun. How do you get a restaurant in outer space? Damned if I know. But it's it came <laughs> off of an interview. That's a lot of stupid questions. <laughs> yeah. I, I was on a podcast uh, last May with uh, with Sam from from Nation's Restaurant News, and yeah. you know uh, he asked me what I thought the five year you know development footprint would be for uh, for Big Chicken, and I said you know right now the preliminary thought is we're going to target Earth, but if you know Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos want to talk, they should call, right? And uh, you know the stupid idiot response, right? And then that weekend, I'm sitting at home and I'm like, you know, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So I reached out over LinkedIn to the CEO of SpaceX, CEO of Virgin Galactic, CEO of Blue Origin. And uh, and Bob Smith, CEO of Blue Origin, responded and he said, um, or he he accepted and uh, sent him a note. And I'm like, this is going to sound insane, right? But um, I'm Shaquille O'Neal, CEO. And wouldn't it be crazy if we pursued a restaurant in space together? You know, it was sort of the gist of it, right? And he wrote back and was like, I love this. You know, we have a, a nonprofit club for the future who's teaching kids like, you know, STEM education and what it would take to, to have space tourism and life in space someday and all of those things. And, you know, we, we got into this great, con and he connected me to the CMO and we got into this great conversation and now we're working together on this. 
Um, look, a hundred years ago, there was no commercial aviation, right? You would still be taking a boat to Europe, you know? Um, God only knows where we'll be in a hundred years. You know, but, you know, it's not like we're committing to putting a big chicken in space next spring, right? But is it plausible that it, within a hundred years, there would be a restaurant in outer space? It's plausible. I don't know if it'll happen, but it's plausible. And if it's going to happen, why not work together to promote that that dream, that big fun, big dream um, together? And you know, um, we're we're looking at programming where people are actually going to be able to fill out postcards that could come back marked, you know, return from outer space. I mean, kind of cool to have something that touched you go to outer space, right? At this point, so it's it's just kind of big fun, and and we're going to see where it goes. But we're happy to be working with Blue Origin. They are an incredible organization, um, and I mean, what what they stand for, it's it's really unbelievable. It's way beyond the space science. It's really what footprint and what legacy do they want to leave on Earth? And and their tagline is for the benefit of Earth. So I added, you know, and chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, you know, it's so fascinating to me to hear you talk about vendor relationships and. Um, you know, now with the what we're able to do, having partners like Toast who believe in this product and um, this storytelling platform, I noticed that you were in a commercial uh, for Google Workspace. Um, tell me about the commercial, but more importantly, the the bigger thesis of how do you select the partners that um, you you use? Because there's a lot of tech tools, a lot of things that you pick within the your restaurants, um, and then how do you choose which ones you make content with? collaborate with? That's a really long question. Let's break it down, right? So uh -huh. on, on Google, um, Google reached out to Shaquille, you know, they they do these kind of clips that are that are on YouTube that are served to the right audiences. They wanted Shaquille to be a part of it. And Shaquille said, I, I want to do it, but only if, you know, Big Chicken could be highlighted. Um, because we're using Google Workspace tools right now. And they said, well, then wouldn't it be incredible if it was you, your co-founder and your CEO together for this thing? And never thought there'd be the day where I got a phone call from someone saying, hey, we need you to do a Google commercial in three weeks, right? With Shaquille O'Neal. With, with Shaq, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> look at what... <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's bingo, right? Finally got that last square, like, good God, right? Um, this is only halftime. <laughs> exactly, you know? So it's, uh, it, but for us, it was, pretty amazing. Um, and it it really helped open a, a lot of consumers' eyes to who we were. And it was really bizarre. Uh, you know, the, the video breaks and this woman walks up to me, maybe 22, 23 years old, something like that, walks up to me in O'Hare Airport like two days later. And she goes, I have to ask you a crazy question. Do you work for Shaq? And I'm like, that's interesting, right? Um, so so we're pretty, pretty, we were pretty enthused about that. Um, and the Google team is absolutely fantastic, right? Um, and we do use them for, for so much. I, I don't, uh, we're obviously, we do a lot of PR. We do a lot of, of releases and things of that sort. Google Workspace is how we manage all of that stuff. Um, in terms of tech tools and, and those things, I feel like a lot of restaurant operators, they make a mistake in saying, I want to bring on these tech tools and then figure out how we're going to make them all talk together, right? We were way more deliberate in, what is it specifically that we're going to try to solve? Um, and let's make sure that anyone we bring into the system, we are bringing them in specifically to solve that reason, right? Um, we did not go for flash. We did not go for sexy. It was literally like, we need our franchisees to be able to run their businesses extremely efficiently so that they can get the best unit level economics possible, right? And that, that's really what we sought to do with it. Um, when it came to loyalty, we're, we're actually in the process of building our own because um, for, for me, there's restaurant loyalty is lagging behind some other sectors right now. And we really wanted to build the loyalty program where we could simultaneously go after the consumer and the shopper. Uh, most loyalty programs right now only go after the shopper. And we wanted to be able to go after Generation X, Generation Y, Generation Z, and Generation Alpha separately. Um, where most people right now are trying to recede to a least common denominator. So that was the one where we looked around and said, we, we have a different view. We want to do things a little differently. 
And there was a third part to your question, but I don't do well with three part questions. Okay, so the third part was, uh, how do you choose which brands to collaborate with um, that are actually existing partners when it comes to content? Yeah, when it when it comes to content, so like the Blue Origin, like the correct. correct. Yeah. For for me, it's it's really is it a good symbiotic partnership, right? Um, you know, we really put a huge emphasis on this word partnership. Um, we don't look to take advantage of people nor do we look to or allow to be taken advantage of. Um, when we have brands with similar values, similar ethos um, that really kind of fit what we're trying to do and we fit what they're trying to do, it becomes really, really easy to, to build a partnership quickly. It's interesting. Yeah, for me, it's, uh, it's so interesting to hear how much you've been able to put yourself in the right position and utilize, I mean, the, the things, the, the partnerships that you've been able to build just on LinkedIn, because you are willing to, like you say, ask the stupid question, share your truth online, let people know who you are, what you're doing. Um, so many of the things that we believe in in this show. When you turn down franchisees, potential franchisees, you've turned down over 700, is that correct? Turned down now over 2,500. 2,500. Look at my outdated material. 2,500. So you're getting you're turning into the the Harvard of, of franchises. That's, that's my joke, right? My joke is it's harder to get in a big chicken than Harvard. But you know, I'm a Cornell. Did I steal your joke. I haven't heard that. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, tell yeah, me. Tell, that's tell, one of my jokes. Tell, tell us what you're looking for. You know, we we look at two things, right? First, we really want multi-unit, multi-concept franchisees um, because they've done this before. They've worked in different systems at different levels of expertise. And that's critical for us. By the way, that 2,500, it's not as impressive of a number, like 1,500 of them. The franchise application literally starts as like, yo, Shaq, I'll open up a chicken joint with you. <laughs> that's not like, you don't even belong in the inbox, right? Um, I know someone's going to be listening to this and be like, oh, I, I would love that. to see one of those. I did that, you know? <laughs> so, um, but, you know, the, the second piece of this is um, we really want to bring on groups where they excel in one or two areas where they can really partner with me to build the system better, right? So I have a couple franchisees that are incredible marketers and a couple that are incredible at financing and a couple that are incredible at real estate and a couple of that are incredible in project management. You know, we did our first drive through in um, in uh, Vegas. It opened in January. We were talking with multiple franchisees that excelled in drive through already, you know, trying to pick their brains on what what's going to happen. So, you know, the thing about the franchise or franchisee system is it's it's better when one plus one equals 11 than when one plus one equals one. Right. And we've really tried to find the right groups that are able to amplify and accelerate our growth, their growth, mutual growth. And, um, and we're really fortunate. Um, you know, our, 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 every one of our franchisees is, is valued by the other systems that they're in. Um, and we really don't have a single bad apple in the bunch. Mm -hmm. A franchise system is only as strong as the worst franchisee in it. And one of our franchise groups, when they came in, they were buying a territory that was adjacent to another franchisee. And they were insistent on talking to and meeting that franchisee because in the system they were in, the adjacent franchise, the prior, the adjacent franchisee wasn't that good and it hurt their value, right? So we really try to bring in groups where, where every franchisee is like, damn, yeah, I'm glad that guy's in the system now, right? Um, because it strengthens the overall system. Did you ever at any point in your journey have imposter syndrome? Every day. I mean, look, if you have every answer, you have none of the answers, right? Um, you know, you have to make uh, anyone that runs a business, you're tasked with millions of micro decisions every day. And you, I only sleep like four or five hours a night, right? Um, you know, my joke with my franchisees is you could get me 197-363, right? Sleep five hours a day, you're not calling me on Christmas, and I'm not going to pick up on Thanksgiving, right? Other than that, if, if you can't get me within 30 minutes to an hour, I'm on an airplane, right? Yep. But um, but I mean, you would be crazy if you don't second guess yourself a little bit. And if you don't always, but you can't let it fuel you, you need to just keep pushing, right? And um, I could look back on my career and say, here's mistakes I've made. But ultimately, did I learn from those mistakes? And did I fix them for next time? 
you know, Perry says it best, Perry Rogers, she kills agent. He says, I have no problem making a mistake once, but just once, right? Yeah. When you decided to launch with Gold Belly, what was the process behind it? So that predated that predated me. Okay. Yeah. So now give us give us an update on nationwide shipping. Yeah, you know, Gold Belly is a really interesting proposition. Um, you know, it, but as you start opening stores, it it it'll be interesting to see where it goes. Uh, for me, my first time ever eating big chicken because I joined May 2021. And it was, uh, the pandemic was still going on, right? So they shipped me the product in March from Gold Belly. Like that was my first experience with Big Chicken was on, was through Gold Belly, which when you think about it, it's really interesting, right? Yes. And um, I was like, man, if the food is this good shipped from Las Vegas, I can only imagine what it will be like when I get into the restaurant. And that that for me was the major selling point. So a big fan of Gold Belly. I think they're doing unbelievable things. Um, you know, but it'll be interesting to see as we grow how how that partnership progresses. I love it. So uh, every single week on Wednesday and Friday on the social audio app Clubhouse, um, we have digital hospitality leaders from all over the globe, restaurant owners, uh, sales professionals, marketing professionals come and join us on stage. So if you're listening to this, we want you to join us on stage. Uh, every week we do a social shout out. This week, I want to shout out Samuel Sinovic. Um, he is a podcaster. He is the reason why I am here today uh, interviewing Josh. So shout out to Sam. Thank you for Stanovich. Sam Stanovich. 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 He's uh, he, he was absolutely incredible. I met him because of audio storytelling, because of podcasting. And, um, you know, back to kind of the theme of this. You never know where these conversations lead. Um, you never know what where where you'll be in your career and where the opportunity will take will take you to tell you know an incredible story. Do you have somebody um, that you'd like to give a shout out to the Big Chicken brand? Well, you know, I mean, I we could go on for hours. It could be like you you're playing the Oscar music. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll get you off the stage. <laughs> yeah, but but uh, but to your point, you know, I, I just think back to that day in 2015, right? Random 702 number calls. Imagine if I don't pick up that call from Perry Rogers. Right. I'm selling Budweiser somewhere in the U S right now, instead of on this, on this podcast with you and doing what we're doing in big chicken. And it just shows, you know, you can meet people in any moment in your life and don't realize that that moment is what's going to change your career and your life forever. Uh, which is just fantastic. Um, you know, shout out to Shaquille, obviously, um, he, you know, shout out to Perry Rogers, Matt Silverman, Corey Jenkins, our, our whole kind of ownership group, authentic brands group. But, uh, we're in this together and it's one team, one dream. And it's, it's how do we build something that we're all proud of long-term and, and how does big chicken become a part of the legacy we leave behind, not just from a business standpoint and a brand standpoint, but for also all the employees that touch us every day and our franchisees and their employees. So uh, we talked about dreaming big dreams. I'm going to ask a big dream of mine. Is it would we be able to do another interview at one of the store openings with Shaquille O'Neal and do kind of a behind the scenes, this is what it looks like uh, before Big Chicken uh, gets opened up to the public? Would that be I awesome? love that you asked the question that way because you gave me the easy out. The answer will be no, because <laughs> Shaquille can't come to the openings, right? Uh, oh, really? Yeah, as it, as it is, uh, our openings are, have been so big that we, big. <laughs> we normally operated over a hundred percent of our kind of stated, this is the maximum you could do in a day. And every franchisee is like, this was the maximum you said, but we're open one day. We already beat that by 10, 20%. Right. So we, we want Shaquille to come after the restaurant calms down a little bit, okay. uh, not at, not at the grand opening. So um, thank Maybe. you for asking the question that day, that way you gave me the easy out. How about maybe a two-part series? We'll do a grand opening because I'd, I'd love to see how the how a big chicken gets opened, but then another interview at another time with Shaq in the in the restaurant. Yeah, I plead the fifth. But if we can make it happen, <laughs> if we can make it happen. We'll we'll do our best. But, We're gonna uh, make it happen. You heard it here, Josh. Thank you so much. How can people get in touch with you? Get in touch with the brand. Best way for uh, people to follow along. Yeah, best way. LinkedIn for me is absolutely the best way uh, to get with us. Um, you know, uh, we get a lot of cold calls. So if I don't get you immediately back, please stay on me, right? Normally by the time three or four, I'm pretty responsive. But 
LinkedIn's the easiest way to get a hold of me and definitely the easiest way to see what we're doing as a company. Um, we have a lot of big fun coming. We're, we're entering Bush Stadium very quickly in opening day uh, and have, man, I don't even know, you know, 15 or 20 restaurants currently under construction and we're just going to keep going. Well, we uh, will look back at this and we'll see uh, in 2023 when we had this interview how 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 halftime went and what third quarter looks like. Oh, halftime's long over. Halftime oh, it was half a, time's over. <laughs> yeah, no, halftime was like a four month window, three month window. Uh, you know, the minute I started this job at Big Chicken, it was start of the second half, and uh, it's um, it's been really really incredible to see the response to the brand and and really, you know, for the industry to embrace a guy who had always been around or who had been around the restaurant industry for a handful of years at Anheuser Busch, but. I was sort of embraced from minute one because a lot of people remembered me from the supply side. And it, it's interesting being a supplier. I, I have different views on some things that are beneficial. And I'm really fortunate that that my partner in crime in this thing, the co-founder, Matt Silverman, is one of the best restaurant operators that, that I've met. And I've met hundreds. And the ability to partner with him every day, and, and he's able to fill in some of my knowledge gaps, and I'm able to bring some things to the table too. It, it's really helped propel our growth. And you mentioned Sam earlier. Sam used to be at the National Restaurant Association, then went to Firehouse Subs as an area developer, now working with us to grow the franchise community. You know, our head of supply chain, Tony Giardina, he was my buyer at Delaware North, where he ran food and beverage procurement. So we've put together an all-star team of people that had known each other prior. You know, our, our CIO, former CIO of Wingstop, you know, he worked with Matt Silverman on a project. It, it goes on and on. It's it's we met people along the way that we said, I want to figure out a way to work with that guy moving forward. And now we're building this team together uh, to do great work. Well, if you guys want to get in touch with me, it's at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. You can connect with Josh on LinkedIn, Josh Halpern. Uh, please follow at Big Chicken Shack on all the socials, uh, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, wherever. And obviously follow Shaq on all platforms because he's phenomenal. He's um, he's pretty pretty damn funny on on uh, Instagram. It's pretty funny. It's pretty phenomenal. Um, Josh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your wisdom. If you ever make it to San Diego, please let me know. Um, that goes for anybody listening to the show. You guys are all part of the uh, Cali BBQ family, so please come out, enjoy some barbecue, and uh, keep keep dreaming big dreams. Let's get uh, let's get big chicken in space. It would be big fun. Absolutely. And a special thank you to our title sponsor, Toast. Toast is the primary technology partner that we use at our restaurant, Cali Barbecue. It is also the primary technology partner that so many of the guests have shared with us on this show. People like Sam, the cooking guy, Stacy Poonkinney, Jeff Alexander. So many times the guests tell us that they're using Toast when we didn't even know that going into the interview. That is why we are so grateful that they sponsor this show. We want you to win. You that listen to this show, we want you to improve your digital hospitality. Toast is built for restaurants and it's built for you. Toast is the restaurant first platform that's built for your needs, whatever your size, concept, or ambitions. Improve your bottom line with a customizable platform that's easy to learn, use, and grow with. And it meets you where you are with all the right tools for your price point. If you have any questions about Toast, please DM me at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. I will get you the link to the right Toast contact in your market. It's so important that if you listen to this show, that you win. We want you to be on this show eventually. Let us know that you heard the show, you heard about Toast, you implemented Toast, you did a Toast unboxing in your restaurant. Talk to us about how you've impacted your village, your city, your community. Share your Toast story with us. DM me today to learn more. And be sure to check out Toast.